Hello viewers, unless your car is made in the 60s or 70s, it definitely has an engine control module or ECM. As the name would suggest, this is in essence a computer that controls the engine and its operation. And thanks to their robust construction, the ECMs are quite reliable and don't fail that often. But when they do, you're likely to have all sorts of weird and unusual issues with your car. So in this video, we'll learn how to tell if you have a faulty ECM and, more importantly, what to do if that's the case. Before covering symptoms and likely causes, we'll first explain what ECM is and what it does. As said, the ECM is short for Engine Control Module, but it's also sometimes called ECU or PCM. But whatever the designation might be, this electronic component has the same job – control the engine's operation and adjust it for optimum performance. To do so, the ECM receives signals from various sensors fitted around the engine. This includes crankshaft position sensors, MIF and different pressure and temperature sensors, just to name a few. Then, based on this data, the ECM triggers components that in turn make the engine run, such as fuel injectors and spark plugs. It also activates and deactivates solenoids that control features like variable valve timing or turbochargers, should the vehicle have them. Lastly, the ECM continuously monitors the engine's temperatures and pressures, adjusting them if necessary. Truth be told, this small metal box, despite its vital role, doesn't look like much. But the fact is that an average ECM in a 10-year-old family car has way more computing power than a Saturn missile that took the astronauts to the moon. And most of the time, it will work flawlessly and without a glitch. But now let's see what might happen if the ECM starts acting up and which symptoms you could expect to see. If exploring engine running issues on our site, or any other for that matter, you'll notice a faulty ECM usually listed among possible causes. In most cases, though, it will be down toward the end of the list because these components rarely fail. But with the ECM controlling more or less every aspect of the engine's operation, you can expect all sorts of symptoms should this happen. And here are some of them that are most likely. With a malfunctioning ECM, you'll possibly have a check engine light on your dashboard. This also means a corresponding trouble code will be stored in the vehicle's diagnostic memory, which you can get using an OBD scan tool. The code, however, can easily throw you off track, as the ECM usually can't recognize its internal faults. Or in simple words, a faulty ECM will incorrectly interpret data coming from the sensors and solenoids and assume they aren't working correctly. This is why a detailed diagnostic procedure should be done before changing any parts. Even more, you might have all sorts of engine running issues with no codes being triggered. While frustrating and confusing, such behavior could be a telltale sign of a faulty ECM. One of the ECM's most crucial tasks is setting the fuel injection and ignition timing. And if this computer is not working correctly, you're likely to experience a misfire, hesitation and poor overall engine performance. While this can be caused by many things, the way it happens could indicate a malfunctioning ECM. More symptomatically, these engine issues will be random and erratic, with the car running just fine at one moment and then going all haywire at the other. So if that's what you're experiencing, checking the ECM is one of the things to do. If severe enough, ECM issues could prevent the engine from being started in the first place. This might happen if it fails to communicate correctly with the immobilizer or crankshaft position sensor. And even if it starts, your car might still cut out while driving without any warning signs. Besides being annoying and inconvenient, this can also be very dangerous, especially if it were to happen in fast-moving traffic. With its operation way out of balance, the engine in your car will not be running optimally. Apart from affecting performance, this will also result in increased fuel consumption. Partially, this is because you'll probably be pressing the throttle much harder to make up for the power loss. But more importantly, the air-fuel mixture might not get completely burned during the combustion process, making it less efficient. From a driver's point of view, you could notice clouds of black smoke from the exhaust when this happens. If the ECM is non-functional, you most likely won't be able to connect the OBD2 scanner to it. 
When plugged in, these diagnostic devices communicate directly to the control modules. And with a dead ECM, there won't be anything for it to connect to. Sure, this can be caused by other things, such as a damaged OBD port or its wiring, but if you're having other symptoms as well, there is a good chance the ECM is bad. As with many other things, where the ECM is physically located depends on the vehicle in hand. In many cases, it will be somewhere inside the engine bay, with most car makers placing it inside the fuse box. This gives extra protection against heat, moisture and other unfavorable elements. Some cars, however, have the ECM fitted inside the passenger cabin. This can be somewhere within the dashboard, behind the glove box or under one of the front seats. With all that, finding the ECM can sometimes be difficult and frustrating. There is, however, a quick and simple way of narrowing down its location. While under the hood, follow the engine's harness and see where it goes as it ultimately plugs into the ECM. This will give you a rough idea of where to look for it. But if this doesn't help, you can always consult the repair manual or try asking in the comment section below. The ECM is, in essence, a sealed metal box with a circuit board inside it, so there are only a few things that can go wrong with it. For a start, if water or moisture finds its way into the housing, it could cause corrosion on delicate electronics. Besides potential short circuits, these buildups will likely obstruct communication between various electronic components within the ECM. Next. An issue with car's electrical system may cause voltage spikes, which could fry ECM's electronics. This, for instance, uh, could happen if the alternator is faulty or because of damaged wiring. Lastly, the circuit board and its sensitive electronics could suffer from mechanical damage. Most of these components are soldered in and the soldering may crack or break apart. And when that happens, the affected part will lose contact with the circuit board, preventing communication. If any of the above has happened to the ECM in your car, you'll probably have to replace it. And that's when things get tricky, as these electronic things are anything but cheap. Depending on the car, a new ECM will set you back anywhere between 500 and to well above several thousand dollars. Obviously, the price will be lower for an older car with a less complex engine than for a new luxury SUV. To make things worse, getting a used ECM in most cases is not an option. This is because this control module is usually paired with an immobilizer and corresponding car keys. Moreover, most newer cars have their VIN inscribed into the ECM and other modules. And when fitted to another vehicle, these devices will most likely not work correctly. While both these problems can be solved by reprogramming, this is usually expensive, which makes the whole procedure economically unfeasible. Alternatively, you can try to have your ECM fixed, which might be cheaper than buying a new one. This, however, is not something you'll usually be able to do on your own, as it requires skill and special tools. Instead, this job should be done by a workshop specialized in such repairs. You'll also have to factor in the time needed for shipping and actual work, which may be a limiting factor in many cases. So I suppose that's enough about the engine control module at this point, as you now probably know what this vital car component is and what it does. And more importantly, I hope this video helped you figure out whether the ECM in your car is malfunctioning and that you've managed to sort this out. If so, give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. But if none of this hasn't helped, something else is probably causing the issue. To continue troubleshooting, check out other videos here or visit our site mechanicbase.com for other automotive repair guides.